Welcome to our lecture online and our next video in chemistry and our introduction on chemistry is atoms and molecules. So here we have a pictorial of what we would call a hydrogen atom. An atom is something that has a nucleus and the nucleus usually contains protons and neutrons. Now protons and neutrons are kind of the building blocks of the nucleus of an atom and the number of protons determines what type of atom you have. So in this case there's a single proton which makes that atom a hydrogen atom. Here in our example, we have, let's say, eight protons and eight neutrons. The fact that it has eight protons makes it an oxygen atom. Now here's the nucleus, and it turns out for an atom, the, the number of electrons we have in the atom, which typically circle around the nucleus, will be equal to the number of protons in the nucleus. Since hydrogen only has a single proton, it will therefore only have a single electron. In the case of oxygen, since there's eight protons in the nucleus, oxygen will have eight electrons. And it turns out electrons tend to hold up themselves or tend to uh, find location around the nucleus uh, where there's room for them. And that is usually decided by the energy levels that the electrons can take, that, uh, that the electrons can, can find around the nucleus. For example, with oxygen we have what we call an inner, inner energy level which has room for two electrons. Then there's a second energy level which has room for eight electrons and since oxygen only has a total of eight and two of them already occupy the inner energy level, then there's only six electrons in the outer energy level, which basically means that there is open spots for two more electrons, but oxygen doesn't need those two electrons because it only has eight protons, so it's what we call neutral. It has the same number of positive charges and negative charges. Now, hydrogen only has one electron in its innermost energy level, which means hydrogen also has room for a second electron in that innermost energy level. And what atoms tend to do, atoms like to fill up these empty spots. So there's this tendency to go through a chemical change where an electron is captured to fill that extra spot, or in this case of oxygen, that they would like to have two extra electrons to fill in the two empty spots, and then they would have what we call the valence uh, level of electrons completely filled. Now, in the case of hydrogen, it's okay with giving the one away and being completely empty, or adding one more and have a complete filled outer shell, as we call it. Now, so hydrogen will do both, either try to get an extra electron to fill it up, or get rid of the extra electron and give it away to somebody else who wants electron more often. For example, oxygen is more likely to want an extra electron than hydrogen, so it'll go to a hydrogen atom and strip away the electron, put it in here, and then of course the atoms will be ionized. With other words, this atom will now have one positive charge and no negative charge, so it's positively charged as a whole atom, and that become, therefore we then call it an ion, and that's another, another lecture. And here, if the oxygen can find two other hydrogens to strip away its electron, we can then put one in there and one in there, and then they will electrically attract to each other, and then those two atoms, well, actually one oxygen and two hydrogen, will come together and bond together electrically. So that's when it becomes a molecule, when two or more atoms join together because of the electrical forces attracting it, them, uh, them to each other, then we turn atoms into molecules. And most of the substance in the universe is the case where atoms have joined together into um, molecules and some very complex molecules, matter of fact. So again, an atom is something that has a nucleus with protons and neutrons. It turns out hydrogen is the only, only atom in the universe that does not have a neutron in its uh, nucleus. All other atoms, including oxygen, will have some protons and some neutrons. And typically, as the atoms get bigger and the nuclei have more particles in them for the heavier elements on the periodic table, then there'll probably be more neutrons and protons. And again, that's another lecture on why that is so. Okay, so now we know what atoms are. Atoms are simply uh, the simplest building blocks of matter that contain protons and neutrons in the nucleus and electrons around it in orbits. Protons and neutrons in, in the nucleus and electrons zip around that, that uh, nucleus at very high speeds. Um, and then also, what we should know is that it's the nucleus which has the predominant amount of mass of the atom. More than 99.9% .9 of all the mass of an atom is contained within the nucleus. A very small amount of mass is contained within the electrons, almost insignificant, less than one-tenth of one percent. Now, the electrons are what give the atoms volume. If it wasn't for the electrons around the nucleus, 
the nuclei and the atoms would have very, very tiny volumes. As it is, they're very small. But they would be even much, much smaller if there weren't electrons around to give an atom volume. So when you hold an atom in your hand, of course you can't see it, they're too small, the volume of that atom is really given to us by the electrons whirling around. So it's the electron shells around the nucleus that give an atom volume. So you put atoms on top of each other, you're basically putting these electron shells made by the electrons whirling around the nucleus on top of each other. If you were to be able to squeeze that space away from each other and put nucleus in nucleus, matter would have almost no volume. Now you also see that molecules can be formed by taking the same atoms and binding them together. In the case of hydrogen, you can take one hydrogen and then a second hydrogen and join them together. And it turns out they end up sharing the two electrons that each one of them has. Well, actually each one of them has one and they end up sharing it. It's kind of like a, a mixture of a covalent and ionic bond. And again, those I'm throwing out terms you may not be familiar with and we'll learn that later. I just want you to understand that hydrogens can actually bind together by sharing their electrons. Oxygen can, oxygen can do the same thing. Remember what I said, Oxygen atoms would like to have eight electrons around the outer shell, and since each oxygen atom brings six electrons to the table, four will remain with each atom, and then the two come from the, from the first atom, two will come from the second atom, and those four will be shared among the two atoms, kind of back and forth, causing a semi-ionic, some, somewhat of a covalent bond, supposed to be ionic because uh, the, the fact that then the electrons are gone, it, it forms, well, actually it forms more of a covalent bond, I should say. But again, it's a mechanization for the atoms to form together into a single molecule. So we can have what we call a diatomic molecule of two hydrogens, a diatomic molecule of two oxygens, or we can have one oxygen join it together with two hydrogens. And again, notice that two electrons are shared between the hydrogen and the oxygen. Two electrons are shared between this hydrogen and this oxygen in such a way that part of the time this oxygen gets eight electrons, part of the time this hydrogen gets two electrons, and part of the time this hydrogen gets two electrons. So there's kind of a sharing or covalent bonding going on between those atoms. And then ultimately, we can depict these molecules like this. Here we have what we call a single bond caused by two electrons being shared between the two atoms. Here we have what we call a double bond, where we have four electrons being shared between the two atoms. And here we have two single bonds between each hydrogen and the oxygen, hydrogen and oxygen, where two electrons are shared here and two electrons are shared here. So it's this electrical attraction um, that occurs and the, the need for the outer shells to be completely filled with electrons. These forces then join together to form molecules out of singular atoms. And that's why we have atoms and molecules in the universe.